I was also in your Facebook group actually at the time. I was seeing like there's a lot of members in there. So I was like, guy looks like he's doing pretty good. I remember asking you like, how much are you making? You know, I was like, for real. And then you're like, I think back then it was like 30 or 40 grand a month. But to see a fucking guy that you were every single week with him going snowboarding, to be like somebody that you were very close with, you've been to his house and like, you're, it's not like somebody's telling you, the guy's showing me the bank account. Like literally, I remember at some point, you even showed me when I first got into QuickBooks, you'd shared your screen and I was like, there's no fucking way. I think you, you've been... <laughs> Oh my God. I, every single time when people ask me how I got started, I always mention a friend. I never mention a name. I'm like, there's this good guy. It's like, got me into that space. It's like, that's the guy. <laughs> that's the guy right there. <laughs> All right, so welcome back to the channel. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Justin and now the founder at Wizzle Media, an e-commerce marketing agency working with seven and eight figure e-commerce brands. And I'm now today with one of my great, great friends, Mikael, who is also an agency owner in a different space, in the real estate space. Um, he's been doing amazing. He's been doing that for quite a long time at this point. Uh, Mick, I'll let you introduce yourself properly. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, my name is Michael. I've been uh, running an agency now for more than five years. I mean, I call it an agency, but it's more like a consulting business, helping real estate agents get more listings uh, with YouTube ads. Yeah, and that's what you're doing right now though, but that's not always what you've done, right? So you kind of transitioned into that model as of last year, but um, yeah, let, let, let's get started, I guess, with that angle. Tell us more about how you got started, like five years ago, and you hear that right now we're recording that in 2023, so that's like 2018. Not a lot of people had a social media marketing agency back, it was not that popular, so. Take us back to the beginning. Indeed, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can uh, actually go through. Um, you know, I was like back in high school, you know, trying to like, you know, follow the like, typical path that like uh, all the students are, um, are following. Um, my idea was like to go to college, go to university, um, and, uh, you know, basically, uh, yeah, follow the difficult path. But then I realized like, hey, like I need to make money right now. You know, 16 years old, this is usually when you type, you, you start to like actually look for like your first few jobs. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go like the traditional route. Like nothing was really, I don't know, drawing my attention really. So I was like, all right, let me start Googling what I can do. Then I stumbled upon like, you know, SMMA, they yeah. call it. Um, decided to go all in, even though I had like, zero clients i knew like entrepreneurship was for me i was passionate about it i was like all right i don't need school i'm going to be the one employing people so why do i need like a degree specifically um decided to drop out go all in focus on this and uh yeah a few years later i mean uh, we're on track to hitting like over a mil a year let's go and that's that that's amazing man uh let's give a little bit of like background story about where and how long we've known each other for. Yeah. Um, the thing that that's crazy with like Mikad is like, he's been literally, I, I don't like to say my best friend since like sixth grade. Cause like there was a gap in the middle, <laughs> but then we basically, yeah, let's get, let's go through that actually. Yeah. So we have known each other since sixth grade. So literally since elementary school, um, we both were in a uh, like English program. Like we're both coming from like a French, Canadian place. We both learned English like in the same like year. Like we did like a English immersion program. We went to high school together and like so that people understand every weekend I was in your car with your parents going snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Um we like yeah, in sixth grade we did like a you know immersive like uh English program, like mm -hmm. intensive uh English program. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much like best friends, hanging out every day together and the weekend, like going snowboarding with like a few other dudes. Um, fun time, and then like uh, high school came, um, we, like, you know, basically stopped hanging out with each other, each other um, yeah. without necessarily going to, uh, to details. And then after that, like we, um, you know, matured and stuff like that. And yeah, then yeah. after that, we actually came back together and <laughs> that sounds like a couple almost at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, but like just for context, um, when I dropped out of high school, I didn't tell anyone, mm -hmm. right? Anyone, like the only person who knew was my sister, my dad, my mom, that's it. Yeah. So didn't want to tell anybody, including my friends, just because I didn't want to get influenced. 
um, I know people were um, would have said some things like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, I don't think it's the best decision for you. Uh, you're gonna ruin your life, stuff like that. So just didn't got, just didn't want to have like their opinion at all. Um, I knew in my gut feeling um, the decision I wanted to take. So anyways, long story short, um, like Justin like didn't really know um, what I was up to or like why I did that and stuff like that. And then, yeah, do you want to explain like how we like, you know, Re like kind of re reconnected? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, it was as a contractor. Like if we really uh -huh. take it back to like that <laughs> first reconnection, um, I remember you like dropping out and I, we, we've talked about that a couple of times. Like to me, that was, I was very surprised and kind of baffled by it. I was like, I was not expecting it at all. And to be quite, I didn't even know you dropped out. My first thought was like, he's sick. <laughs> Cause like you missed school for a little bit. I'm like, yo, he's like severely sick, you know? And no one really knew what was going on. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure I reached out to you at some point And like you told me, um, probably a month or two like in. And I was like, yeah. oh, like, okay. Um, and then, you knew I had been doing design. So also to add some context, I had been doing YouTube for like a few years at that point. Like I started YouTube in 2015. So it was like my third year on YouTube. I was doing uh, gaming videos and I was also doing like graphic design. And I think you... you and <laughs> oh my God. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, that's that's the beauty of, 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 you know, being live and recording some stuff. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, to get back to like the, the story, um, you had started working with some clients at the at the time uh, with dentists back yeah. then, and then you'd reach out to me. You're like, "Yo, uh, could you help me like with some design for a dentist?" I remember it was literally for like making um, like a, a a header that was like animated with like uh, like there, there's like this tooth coming on. It was like a green background. You remember that? It's like a green background with like a bunch of little like green dots for like. Your, your dentist client had stayed yeah. for a while. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna name them, but that yeah. client. Yeah. Um, and then I did like some animation work for you. Um, yeah, that I recall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that like that was the first time that we kind of reconnected. So I was basically a contractor of your business. Yeah. yeah. But it was like not not much, you know. Um, and then at some other point, you helped me for a school project. Actually, like you you appeared in one of my presentation <laughs> videos. I, for, yeah. I forgot about like all these <laughs> things because like uh, yeah, damn yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Like, cause what you guys need to know is like, Justin and I were like, it's not like we're like bums at school. Like we're like pretty yeah, like not nerdy, but like we're pretty like we were good yeah, at yeah. school. Um, always like in the best program and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I guess we, we connected in, in these ways. I actually forgot about these. Like I helped you with like a, a math project to record yeah, a video. Exactly. Man, yeah, like that, that video <laughs> is so cringe. Like uh, I still recall. Yeah. yeah, so basically it's so funny because like my, man, we're just going way back. People watching this are like, these guys are going on a tangent here, but it's all right, <laughs> we, got, we got to. The, the people need to know. Uh, my girlfriend, which I'm still with right now, was technically my girlfriend already back then. Um, we had we were working on a project together for math class in our last year of high school in our senior year and we needed like we wanted an expert to come and talk about like uh like numbers or something we needed somebody who like looked trustworthy and we're finances like, yeah, finances yeah, right yeah. So, so i was like, like yo, yo I'm my the guy I'm, michael I'm has money a business guy. <laughs> the guy's got money he needs to come talk <laughs> so we got him on a video which actually like you weren't there but i, I kid you not the entire class was like freaking out you know i was like no way you guys did that you know you got him back on a on the yeah, video yeah. it was so fun so anyways um long story short we reconnected a couple times like maybe like it sounds like we were still best friends but truthfully like we maybe talked two or three times in that year like it, it was not like it was something recurring yeah um and then one of our good friends put us back in touch together um he also dropped out of like uh, of college actually him and then it was like yeah, we, we, we reconnected at that point. And I had seen your content for a while. I was also in your Facebook group actually at the time. I was seeing like there's a lot of members in there. So I was like, guy looks like he's doing pretty good. Like he's like, if he's still there doing that thing, he must be doing good, right? Like there must be something working. Um, by the way, let me ask you this. Are you afraid of sharing numbers in this podcast or no? Can I talk numbers? Not at all. Okay. So at that point, I think we were like 19 and I reconnect with you. I'm in my last year of college. And in a lot of podcasts I've appeared on, I know people watching this that may have heard my story. I 
every single time when people ask me how I got started, I always mention a friend. I never mention a name. I'm like, there's this good guy. This is like, got me into that space. It's like, yeah. that's the guy. <laughs> that's the guy right there. <laughs> so with that being said, um, basically, I was in my last year of college and I was like, shit, am I really gonna do this? You know, am I really, like, I'm a year away of finding a job. Is this what I want? You know, so yeah. I started exploring with like options of, maybe freelancing some more. And then you told me at the point, like we started talking a little bit more because I remember asking for advice through Facebook Messenger. I was like, hey, Mick, like, what do you recommend I do? And then you're like, you know, you should start doing more designs. Like you're good at design. You should start offering more of that. I was like, yeah, it's good. Which I did and got more design clients at the time, still under my own name. Um, and at some points we met back in person. And I remember asking you like, how much are you making? You know, I was like, for real. And then you're like, I think back then it was like 30 or 40 grand a month. And then I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, back then, you know, I'm a guy, like I was, I, I don't even think I was working at Apple at, I don't know, I was, I was working at Apple at the point. I was like making 20 bucks an hour. I'm like, fuck, like this guy, same age as me. And the truth, why it hit me so much is because for the last year prior to that conversation, I was in the kind of growth space, like personal growth. I was like learning more about, you know, making businesses, bettering yourself, training and all that kind of stuff. So I was already in this rabbit hole yep. and it was all online people though. So I was like, ah, is this real? Is this not? Are those just unicorns, right? But to see a fucking guy that you were every single week with him going snowboarding to be like somebody that you were very close with, you've been to his house and like, you're, it's not like somebody's telling you, the guy's showing me the bank account. Like literally, I remember at some point, you even showed me when I first got into QuickBooks, you'd share your screen and I was like, there's no fucking way. For real? Like, I remember. <laughs> I don't seeing. recall that. <laughs> I shared my screen and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number? I, I, what I was remember. the number? Uh, it was like close to half a mil or something like I, oh, I, I think you had in the bank at, yeah. at, at that point, which I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Just opened your eyes. Oh yeah, man, yeah. that was like, I, I was baffled. By that point, I was hooked. I was like, yeah, fuck that. Like, <laughs> there, there's yeah. something to be done right here. <laughs> and I don't, I really don't mean that as like an offense, but I was like, not that there's nothing special, but you're obviously something very, very special. If this dumb guy can do it, <laughs> then I, I like, can do it. <laughs> right? So no, but I was like, yo, we come from the same hometown, yeah, man. Yeah. We got, we live in a very similar like yeah. kind of neighborhoods. We've got similar parents, yeah. similar background. I'm like, similar yo, background. if this guy can do it, like, let me give it a shot. And I'm like, but yeah, like it, it really opened my eyes to, to just starting. Like honestly, I, I owe so much to you and I like I'm I, I don't want to take any credit for it. I wanna give you all the credit. Like thank you <laughs> honestly for like helping me get started. Um and yeah, like that's man, that's a tangent that we just want. We spent 10 minutes going about the story. So now people know how we know each other and why I got started in business and <laughs> how much money this guy had. So <laughs> that's all they know about. Um so now, with that being said, um, I want to take you back, man, to, 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 to the beginning of the beginning. Like, we right. talked about family. Yep. Let's go back to childhood, man. Yeah. What was it like growing up? Just, like, talk to me through your background, man. Bro, I had a good uh, good childhood, to be honest. Like, growing up, um, pretty happy family. Got a sister. Like, you know, my parents are, 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 are good. They're together still to this these days. Um yeah, nothing special to be honest. Like, um, I was just, I guess, an average kid. I mean, not necessarily average um, in the sense, like, how can I explain? What I'll say is like this um, I, I was like your typical guy, maybe like a bit popular in, uh, I don't wanna brag, man. I hate bragging. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the truth. Like, um, in, in um, elementary school, um, I was like the popular kid. You were. Um, yeah. All the girls were like chasing me. <laughs> Um, and then yeah, it's facts, by the way. <laughs> and then in high school, um, I was a bit more low key. Um, you know, didn't really try to you know gain popularity or anything. Yeah. Um, just doing my thing. But one thing I'll tell you about me is that I never imagined working for somebody else. Never, ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever, ever again. Like, no, I mean, never again. Like, just never. Um, when it, it never happened, right? You never even had. Never I mean, besides this cleaning gig, I think you had with like, yeah, yeah. but that was like, um, you know, something I was doing once a week, took me an hour, gonna pick like 50 bucks for it. Yeah. And it was like my, my cousin, um, my cousin's business. So, so like, like you never had a part-time job even. No, yeah. never. Like when I, th you know, like when you're a kid and you're like, imagine the future of like yourself working. Yeah. I never imagined somebody like tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I always hated like having someone, like someone tell me what to do, like just authority in general. Mm -hmm. I just like 
can't stand it. Okay. <laughs> so let, I guess let, let's let's go on that tangent for a second. This is a recurring theme. I've spoken to other business owners and friends, and a lot of people are like, the main thing they they talk about is like, I can't stand authority, or I could not imagine myself working for someone else. Do Do you think we just all like have authority complexes, like the ones <laughs> that start a business, or like where do you think that stems from? Why do you think that is? I'm going deep here, but I'm curious. Damn, where is this coming from? Um, I don't know, maybe it's ego, like deep down, mm. I think I know how to do it. So I'm like, nobody will tell me how to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or okay. like I can do it better or something like that. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I, maybe, like, I don't know, do you have a authority? I mean, I don't know if it's even a authority have... complex, but like. If you ask people around me, man, like my, 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 my girlfriend and stuff knows that, like I, I don't like authority, like in general, yeah. I've I've never, been good with authority. I've always had a bit of a clash with, well, so, all right, going back to context for a second, you were the popular kid. We were in this group of boys that were quote unquote, yeah, like whatever, like part, cause okay. We were like in the, in the smart kids, but like the popular kind of smart kids. So we yeah. were like not the popular, popular people, but like somewhat in our own like little group, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, I was like the clown, man, but I was not like a good clown. I was a bad clown. Yeah. So like for me, when I was like back then, <laughs> dude, I had, I gone through some shit. Like my, yeah. my, um, anyways, I don't want to complain it also, but like my parents not being together to me, that like really shifted the trajectory of my life. Um, and like the, the years after I got into a lot of school fights, like right before, like the year right before we, we actually met. And then from there on out, I was just like a classical. I was like picking on people for no reason, but I was also like a very small kid. So it was like, we were both very polar opposites when you think about it back then. Like you were the tall guy, tall, handsome guy that like girls liked. I was the small skinny kid that was yeah. picking on people. Like, yeah. so it was a very polar opposite. Sure, when you think about it, yeah. Right? So. I think our complex for authority comes from different backgrounds. Like I think for me, it's probably because I, I if I really try and dig deep, I probably never felt in power back then. So like I, I had to like create power for myself some way, shape or form, which is why I kind of ask you, I was like, I curious for somebody who's tall and was handsome. To me, it's like all I wanted. When you're a kid like that, you're like, yo, life is as simple as that. I just want girls to like me, you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that's why I was curious to ask. But um, if you don't know, it's I don't know. Maybe it's like actually the opposite. Like I'm used to like, you know, having, I don't know, things like not, not coming to me because it's like actually not true. But I don't know, man. I just from a young age, I've always wanted to be the best at everything I, I was doing, you know, like playing yeah. video games, for example. I wanted to like, you know, playing like Black Ops 2, wanted to like, that you was know, so fun. get everything like <laughs> maxed out with like diamond camos, stuff like that, whatever. So I think it's just uh, my nature. I'm just competitive with like myself, I think. Mm. And let's get into that first bit. I mean, I'm gonna call it a first business, even though it's the same name as you still are operating on there. It's, it, it really yeah. transitioned and morphed throughout the years. Um, you found success within that first venture, which is quite rare. A lot of people have had a lot of trial and error. Like you've changed niche, you've changed service a little bit, um, but you somewhat stayed true to like your, your sources. Why do you think you found success within that? Was it timing? Was it, w w w was there luck? Was the skill? What, what, what do you think that is like attributed to? Yeah, that's a very good question. I would say a mix of a bunch of different things, but the main thing would just be sticking, sticking with it, right? Mm. Like a lot of people just try, doesn't work, they give up, right? Mm. For me, when dropping out of school, intentionally I dropped out of school because I said to myself, I wanna be successful, and if I drop out of high school, I have zero plan B, zero. I don't even have a high school diploma, so what do you want me to do? Go work to at McDonald's? Like, so I'm like, I intentionally burned my bridges so I can be successful, right? So. It didn't like happen overnight, like for like six, I think in my first year I made like 12 grand and then I invested everything back into like a course. Mm. So I was like with like, I was left with like pretty much a K in profit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like, um, you know, it was like from the get go, but I think it's um, sticking with it, being disciplined mm. and uh, you know, learning, learning, like investing in myself, programs, coaches, mentors, and just applying, reading books, right? Like for, I think two years straight, I was just like not doing anything besides working, learning, um, locking myself in and 
even during the weekend, it's just like grinding it out, you know? That's something that I think I, I admire about you. I've never like, you are the definition of grind and hustle. I think like you're at least you 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 were during that period because I think like you've you've balanced yourself out a little bit more. You obviously still are very hard working, but back then it was like there was a specific schedule to see you. There was like you literally lived by I've got nothing on my phone. You can't talk to me or reach reach me. You were like very in your own bunker. And for how long did you do that? Maybe three to four years, I three, think. Okay. Where like I was just like you know, screw everything else. I'm gonna just like work. And it was because I had no choice, right? And yeah. I did that intentionally from the start. Um, but I think I would not be where I am today if I didn't build all that discipline. Cause now like, you know, I'm a bit more balanced, like you said, you know, mm -hmm. during the weekend, you know, I just hang out completely like for like two, three days with my girlfriend, yeah. no stress, um, work out every day. But uh, before it was like just, work right um yeah. yeah and that was because i i i just recorded actually um not too long ago another episode with a client is that we had kind of a different discussion we were talking about the fact that we were both we were both fortunate to be educated to have a diploma and to have another like another outcome that, that would have been possible for our lives, right? We, we chose that with purpose. Whereas for you, again, what I think, like it's the, I, I wanna touch on this very briefly is you've put your back against the wall. Like I don't know anybody else in my life that has ever done that. Like it was like, if this doesn't work, you're fucked. Like yeah. quite, quite frankly, you're fucked. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. So how did that make you feel? at first, or were you even thinking about it or you'd never really processed that and you were so future oriented that like, you're like, fuck it. Like you never really doubted that. You mean like when I was during that phase of like just grinding it like out? Like when you took the decision, I'm not coming back to school. Yeah. Um, and he, again, we're, we're in our senior year. So it's not like, it, it, it's not like it's common to do that. Like not a lot of people, it's like people are like, well, tough it out, right? It's the last year. Like at this point, just fucking do it, right? Yeah. No, but, it's really not common. Like it's not like, you know, university or stuff like that or like college, you know what I mean? It's like just- Everybody does it, right? Yeah. So, but it, like high school- And back in the days, like it wasn't a common thing. Like no. nowadays, like cool to put in your Instagram bio, like, high school, <laughs> like college dropout, whatever. But back yeah. in the days- It's like five years ago. It so. wasn't cool. Yeah. Like it, you didn't have that era that we have right now where like people do this. Yeah. And it's like considered cool. Um, we didn't have that. So going back to the question, like, how did you process that moment of your life? Like, were, was that causing so much stress that like you kind of found refuge in your work or were you so future oriented that you never really stressed out that much about it? No, for sure I was stressing out about it, especially at the beginning, right? Um, especially when like, you know, people are asking you, so how's the business? <laughs> and then you're like, shit, <laughs> I don't really have clients. <laughs> you know That's a business. Mean? It's not really a business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> So yeah, for sure, like stress was there. Um, yeah, stress was there. Um, yeah, for sure, I processed the, the you know, the, the whole situation. But um, yeah, I, I just like was focused on my goals, you know what I mean? Like, I just pushed through the pain. Um, I had highs, lows, but I think at some point, um, you hit a point where you, I'm grateful I've done that because like I built my work ethic, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't have a problem like working 12 hours a day, seven days a week nowadays, if I need to, is it ideal? No, but if I'm like, you know, if I if I need to, then I'll do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people right now say, I'm in the trenches and they're living in a Miami penthouse, like fucking chilling. And it's that's not the truth. The trenches yeah. in being like in, in, in a basement in your own little room for three years and like not talking to anyone. That's like, I mean, there's probably people listening to that that are in a worst case scenario. Anyways, with that said, like I, I want to go back to, um, to kind of that transition and obviously you were, I mean, I, I don't want to put words in your own mouth, but that must have felt lonely initially. Oh yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%, yeah. Um, yeah, it was super lonely. Like uh, <laughs> the loneliest time I've, uh, you know, ever experienced, I, I would say. Um, you know, I'm grateful to have my sister. I'm really close to my sister. Um, and she was there for me um, from day one. So um, that helped a lot. 
my parents didn't really understand, um, you know, what I was doing. My parents are not entrepreneurs, you know, they're mm. working like, you know, normal nine to fives. And uh, funnily enough, like my, my mother is actually a teacher. So like when she heard <laughs> like I was about to drop out, she was like, no, you're not dropping out. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, I mean, they didn't really understand. They didn't really see the vision. Um, not a lot of people did see the vision that I had, um, but you know, I saw it and uh, I stuck with it. And now, uh, you know, I got these blessings. So when we reconnected, let, let's just move move ahead two to three years after that start, right? You were doing good money, you had a good business structure, yep. you were thriving. Um, then you connected with me and our other friends, David, who <laughs> might be watching this video. Um, how did that make you feel also at this point to finally have people to share share that journey with? Like he, he, came, he came along like much earlier than I did, but um, how, how did it finally feel, I guess, to have other people around you kind of build your own in-person circle? Because I'm sure you were probably talking to people online, but in person. Yeah, honestly, I remember uh, these days where, uh, you know, we reconnected and then uh, some other guys as well hmm. that were into entrepreneurship. And I was like, Damn, I remember telling my sister, like, damn, like, all I was wishing for, like, two years ago was to have some buddies I could, like, relate to and talk yeah. to with, like, about business and entrepreneurship, personal development. And now I have it. So, yeah, felt great. Uh, the good old uh, Starbucks days where we were just meeting yeah. at Starbucks and talking about ideas, right? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, we used to, like, um, meet up at Starbucks with a few other dudes. And um, yeah, it was fun. I think uh, one thing I remember is like, we were talking about like buying a property, I'm, random story by the way, but talking about buying a property and I was like, talking about not getting mortgage, just paying it cash. Um, and I remember like, I saw in your eyes the confusion. So you were like, oh, yeah? what do you mean like paying cash? I'm like, well, if you got a million bucks, your property is a million dollars. Dude, I remember that story. And then you were like, well, how the hell do you get a million bucks? <laughs> I'm like, with your business. <laughs> yeah. And so I think like, yeah, I remember that that story vividly. And I think, um, man, you, you've grown so much like uh, from from that time. Because I, I was thinking, man, like, you know, you, you when you're like in the, I don't know if we can call it like the matrix, but like, you know, the average like mindset yeah, that everybody yeah. has, you don't think these things are possible, no. right? Just like, I didn't think it was possible before because I didn't see that, you know, I'm, I come from a, like a normal average family and stuff like that. Yep. So I remember like this shifted your, it put really in perspective, um, mm -hmm. your beliefs, I think around money, yep. if I'm not wrong. No, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, and in, <laughs> in, in those times, you know, I, I had a lot of changes I had to go through like emotionally or as, as a person, like I really, really had to grow. Uh, Cause yeah, like you, you did open up my eyes a lot to just to, to some of those, those paradigms. And um, how did that, how was it for you to kind of have these people under you now, I guess? Cause like you really took me under like for, for, you know, the first couple of like, looking back at it, I'm like, now, if this was somebody random coming up to me and asking me all these questions and advice, like, I would have probably like never done it, right? I think it's probably due to our already pre-existing condition. Like if I was some rando coming up to you, you, you would have probably never done that. But first of all, let me ask you two questions. Why did you do it? And how was it for you back then? Was I ever annoying actually with, you know, my questions? No, I don't think so. To be honest, I think that, um, you know, you know, I think you were like respectful of like, you know, my time and, you're a pretty smart guy too. So like you, you know, grasp concept pretty quickly as well. Yeah. So no, it was fine. I mean, I didn't really see it as like a burden or risk like responsibility. Yeah. Just like, oh, my friend asking me a question about that. I was actually thrilled because like you're asking questions and you're actually interested in it. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's dope. Like all I want is like to have everybody in my life like thrive, yeah. right? Because I am thriving. I'm trying to like get better every single day. Yeah. And when I see my close friends, my family members trying to do the same, gets me excited, right, for yeah. them. Because I, I know like, you know, everybody can live a better life if they, they want to. Yeah, uh, that, that's good, man. I remember like, honestly, back in the days, uh, when I first started asking you questions, I remember sometimes, I think you were purposely not going in depth in some of my, some of your answers to let me figure shit out. 
Like I also remember sometimes being frustrated with those, which like you, you pointed me in the right direction, but like you wouldn't give me the entire thing. Um, Cause sometimes it's like, just, you just gotta do it. Like a lot of the time you're just like, j like you, you looked at me, you're like, Justin, j just do it. Like just, just fucking st stop asking me questions and do shit. Yeah, it's like, like uh, you know, trying to teach your kid how to like ride a bicycle and then yeah. just like go on it and uh, fall a couple times and then you'll learn. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I appreciate that. Look, like I, I think I, I learn, you know, better in that, in that sense. I think my zero to one is like, again, I, I'm going to mention it one last time in this podcast, but like you had a big role to play in that. My zero to one, which is probably one of the hardest part to go through, like just getting shit started and like figuring stuff out. You helped me a lot. So thank you for that. <laughs> My pleasure. So with that said, now you talked about having your close circle winning uh, and wanting people around you to win. Um, oops, I'm like bumping up the mic now. Uh, your girlfriend, I want, I want to touch on her a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and she's got her own business. She's got her own stuff. How does that make you, how, how, how does that change your, relate? like, how does that make you feel, man, to have somebody besides you who's just fucking going after it, man? I mean, feels great, man. I mean, I could not ask for you know, a better girlfriend, to be honest, like she's like super driven. Everybody around me is like super driven, right? So I don't even think I could be with a girl that's not driven, um, to be honest. So yeah, I mean, it feels amazing. We, you know, oftentimes work together as well, like side by side, uh, when we, uh, we'll be like at my place, at her place, we'll be working on her businesses. And um, yeah, man, it's like the dream, cause like, we can match our schedules well. We're flexible with our time. We can travel when we want, stuff like that. And it's fun. Like I like helping her as well, you know, build her business. Um, I see myself in her like when I started out. Yeah. So like I'm able to like make sure she avoids like m most of the mistakes yeah. that um, I've, uh, I've done. But um, you know, she's also like super, super smart already. And obviously she, um, she uh, she's studying business school as well. So. Yeah, I'm really impressed by uh, what she's uh, accomplishing, man. Um, how is that changing you as a man? Because personally, for me, like I've, I think I've transformed. And I attribute a lot of the. It's like um, there's this word in French. It's called élément de clanchard. How, how do you call that? It's like the the, the thing that kind of starts the snowball, right? Like the like, trigger, I guess. Yeah, the trigger, I guess. Yeah, right. So my girlfriend has been a trigger in many different changes that kind of came in my life. Whereas, like, I feel like girls have a, a innate way of putting back in your face stuff that like you trying to hide deep down. Like it's kind of like they, they, they mirror some of that behavior that like you know deep down you should change or that you should improve on. Yeah. I think I, I became a better man or at least I'd, I'd love to think so since I've been with her. Um, how did that affect you as a person actually being, being with her? Have you ever kind of looked at stuff and being like, damn, I never realized it, you know? That's a very good question. Um, I'm making you think today. Yeah, man. Damn, man. Yeah, I'm trying to think. There's probably something. Um, okay. But I don't have anything coming up right now. Um, but I think, you know, it's just about... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the biggest thing. For me, it's like just having a team. It, it, I think it's a like, similar concept, right? Yeah. You as the leader in the couple or in team, n you have more responsibility. 100%. Right? So it, there's like that, you know, that, that responsibility and you need to like own it. Yeah. Right? So I think it's just leveling up. Um, I think this is what it, um, it brought me the most. Um, I had to just level up emotionally um, and um, in a bunch of different ways, but that would be the main thing, I guess. Um, I love this analogy, you know? Love the analogy of like the team versus versus like the relationship. Um, basically, t to me, I think I'm now realizing this the more and more I move into, like we're, we're in this process of like moving in together. Like it's it's been a big thing lately of in discussions. And to me, it's been like also something challenging to realize like, so far, I, I was kind of doing my own thing. I was living alone, uh, even though we've been together for, for many, many years, because uh, she was still like studying. And I was like, if I fuck up, I, I, I fall down on my own. Like it's all, it's all good, right? But at the same time, there's still some form of accountability with the business. I just think that having a girlfriend puts that accountability to the next level. Like 
that person is right beside you. Everybody on the on your team, or if especially if you have a remote team, and on the internet, you, you can play around. You know what I mean? Like you can yeah. put up a figure and then turn off the camera and be somebody else, not with the girlfriend. It's it's you. You can't hide behind that. So. What I'd say to me, I think, is like now realizing she's her own person, right? And like she's obviously an amazing person, but I think as a man, you do feel a sense of duty of like providing. And to me specifically, I'm like, if you want to work, work. If you don't want to work, I do at least want her to have the, the possibility not to do it. Like I, I'm that person, right? I, I want to offer possibilities at least. And now that we're going to live together, it's like, I can't fuck around. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't just, it's not like, oh, if this doesn't work now, well, fuck it. No, no, like it's affecting her life now. Yep. It's not just mine. Like I'm, my choices have consequences on her now, so it's like it's a lot of accountability. Yeah, same process as like having a team, for example. Like, yep. you know, when you're responsible, for example, like man, it's crazy. I just realized this this morning. Like we're a 15 people team um, it's crazy. right now, so like crazy. Um, but Congrats. thank you, man. But basically, my point was, you have I have like the responsibility of like 14 people. Right? Yeah. Like if they don't make if you know, if I don't pay them their, their salaries or like their commissions, um, they don't pay their mortgages, they don't have anything to eat, like mm -hmm. and feed their kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's serious. You know what I mean? It's not 100%. like it's not the same game like um a few years ago when we were like just <laughs> doing it ourselves. Now it's like actually a real company that we yeah. both have. So yeah, just having that that responsibility. But to be honest, I love it. Um yeah, I wouldn't trade anything for it. I oh, mean, either. And talking about that team responsibility, I met, as you as you know, my uh, for the first time ever, I met a team member last month, which I had never done. Yeah, and that kind of changed also or reinforced that that perspective. You know, he was talking about the house he was building back home. He's also moving to a new country now and is able to bring his wife. Like his wife is actually doesn't work, so like he's the sole provider, and his only job is is Wizzle Media. So it's like. Seeing that in person and being able to to to, to kind of take that in and um, see the impact you have not only on your clients because like, dude, we're doing so many case studies, client interviews. It's like ah oh, numbers this, numbers that. But taking care taking care of like team members, I think, is like another level of uh, of you know feeling good if you if you see it in person. So definitely, yeah, yeah. I um all right, man. So to kind of move on to um, to the now, you just mentioned you have a fifteen person team. Is that the the biggest level it's been at so far? Is that like the highest amount of team members you've ever had? Yep, hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? What do you think now? What do you think now is the moment where you you need that that manpower? Yeah, I mean, I'm just killing a, a sales team right now, really aggressively. So um, we pretty much have like five closers and um, four setters. So yeah, I just did the math. I was like, all right, if I want to hit a million a month and you know have 50 percent profit margin so 500k a month profit um i need like this amount of people this amount of setters this amount of closers and then just start started hiring for it so now you're making your way up to that essentially you're 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 building your way up to that that's like your milestone that's your target yeah that's a target 500k profit per month cool and do you mind sharing right now where you're at uh man this month is like the best one so far like i checked this morning we're at 60k profit and you know the month is not even done and it's like the shortest month february yeah shortest month of the year so um i'm curious to know like how much we'll actually make uh, by mm -hmm. the end of the month but it'll probably be around 70 or 80k profit profit yeah okay yeah. so probably i don't know 100 110 in uh in rev and to me i think or to, to you like to, it, this is your first 100k month it will be. I mean, ha if hasn't happened yet, not on like, wood, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like I, I, I want to give also. I want to come back in time a little bit because for you, what, what I think is crazy is you've put your back against the wall twice in your life so far. You may have done it more, but it sounds like you did it twice. Once when you quit high school and you're like, I got to make this work. Then, as you're an all in or all out type of guy, yeah. when you, you know, you, you had been. Um, so basically, Mikhail had been running his his uh, real estate marketing agency for two to three, I think even four, close to four years. At yeah, point. probably yeah. four years. Four years, um, and doing like very consistent numbers, like a consistent 40, 50 k per month profit, like day in day out, 
for years. Yep. But it was stagnating. Like you had not grown for a year or two, right? At this point, like you had just like stabilized yep. at that level. Almost two years. Almost yeah. two years. And I was trying to scale it, but I wasn't able to. Yeah. So like you were always, you were in that glass ceiling for like almost two years. And then you said like, fuck it. I need to change my entire model. So like in a dime, you fired all of your clients. Yeah. You almost, you basically went back to zero, but now you had pretty much no revenue coming in. You had an entire team to pay. You had, you now moved out of the point. So you had like a, a pretty good apartment with like a pretty good size rent to pay. Yeah. Lifestyle, you know, to, to, to keep up with that, but zero intake. So you were living off of what you had saved up for months yeah. before finally being profitable again around, I, I would like to say four months ago. Yeah, approximately, yeah. About four months ago. Um, so pretty much just for context, basically, I was in the French market, right? In Quebec, yep. Canada. And um, we hit 35 real estate agents. And uh, we were charging 1500 per month uh, for like a done for you service, uh, running Facebook ads, Instagram ads for them, generating leads. Now, I was at a point where like my team was capped, right? Mm. They're maxed out, trying to like, almost like burning out. And the retention was like good for specific clients we were working with for like almost like two years and a half. But the problem was I needed to scale my team. I had to like, if I wanted to double, like, cause I wanted to hit like 80, 100K profits a month, um, I knew I needed like t twice the team members. Yep. And I didn't want this. Mm -hmm. Like, I already had too much, like too many headaches, uh, too many fires to like um, manage on a day to day basis on the service delivery side of things. And I was also feeling like the um, market, I was trying to like, I, I almost capped it as well, mm. right? Maxed it out. So I was like, I did two major changes. The first one being I switched from the French Quebec market to the English US market. So I had no case study in that market. Like pretty much like started from scratch, right? Almost. Yep. Um, and then the second thing is uh, we switch our offer, yeah, right, in our model. So instead of offering Facebook ads, we, we went with somebody, with something that was like a bit more like blue ocean, which is YouTube ads. And right now we're like crushing it for our agents with YouTube ads. But, you know, these are like two major uh, things that I did. Pretty much, like you said, fired all my clients, fired a lot of my team members back then. So pretty much like started from scratch again. Um, so just so you guys understand, like it wasn't an easy decision, right? Cause you imagine this. It was a three month, three, almost like, yeah, three, three and something month decision. Yeah. We had been speaking about that since January of 2022. Yeah. And you made it in like March, I, yeah. I think so. Cause I was like, I was like, not trying to scale it. And then I was like, you know, dabbing in it, dabbing out. And then you're like, you just got to cut it off. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let Which just... is, it's so funny. It's full circle, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you For initially real. helped me start it. And then at that point, I remember, cause like we went to Miami. I was like, yo, yeah, you stop, stop this shit. You gotta, you gotta just fucking yeah. do it at this rip point. Like you got it off, rip the bandaid off. Like, yeah. So imagine this, right? Yeah. You're like 20, 21 years old. You're making 30, 40 grand a month profit every single month. Yeah. With predictability, man. 40K a month hitting your bank account. Yeah. So <laughs> then you, you decide to give this up yeah. for nothing. Zero. You fire all your clients, right? So my back was against the wall. Because I, I had a team to pay. Yeah. I was running paid ads. I was spending a lot of money on, on Facebook ads. Um, and then yeah, a bunch of expenses. And then let's not name the program names, but you joined like a fuck ton of expensive programs back. You joined like a 60K mastermind. Then 65. you joined 65K, <laughs> 65K, 65, 65K mastermind. And then you joined like another, uh, I think like a 20 grand one or like a 15 grand one or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you, you had all the expenses piling up and then you were unprofitable for like a, a while, right? So you, yep. you ate through the reserves that you had put aside all in the hopes of finding a model that was more pleasant to you and that the market would potentially resonate a little bit better with, correct? Exactly, yeah, and this is what we, we, um, we've we done. So pretty much in a year, I built it up to like this point where we're at right now. So I pretty much like started from scratch again. And now that I knew exactly what to do in a year, like we're on track to hit like, you know, 
a mill in profits because yeah. of that. You know what I mean? It's like zero, zero to a million a year. And I think this, this is probably because like all this experience that you compile, like you, yes, you were profitable when you had the, this other agency, right? And, and largely profitable, but it was like a testing ground for you for that new business. Like you, you, it was like a sandbox for you to learn and fill. And like, this is where you, you made yourself up, you built yourself up. Yep your credibility also in the industry so that now when you transition to that new model, it was like, boom, like I, I, I know what I can and cannot do yep. and let me just go ham at it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And to the Mikael in 10 years, I want you to project yourself in the future. A lot of people usually on podcasts, they ask the opposite. What would you wish you could have told yourself earlier? Fuck that. What, what, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do you see your, like 10 years, you're now you're 22. Yeah. Um, you're going to be 32. What's Mikael at 32 doing? Damn, man. I think that's a great question. I have no idea, right? Because like if you were to ask me like, even like 10 years ago, if I would be where I'm at, I'd be like, no way, right? We so, met 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's fact. So yeah. probably, I don't know, man. Um, maybe my own, like I'm for sure my own, my own house. Um, maybe like two kids. Um, with my girlfriend, maybe married men. I don't know, man. Two little dudes running around. <laughs> two, two little Mikaels, just two little uh, future entrepreneurs, you know. Talking about real estate and business, you know, yeah. and diapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, man. Um, who knows? Like, I don't know. I just want to, like, you know, live life, enjoy, uh, build a business, work on myself, um, help others out, and uh, keep growing. For me, it's just about personal development, you know. Um, I, I like to get better and uh, this is what, this is my passion, you know? And that's that's great, man. Uh, like, I, I'm trying to understand one thing. You had a lot of authority in the Quebec market. Why did you switch? And why the US market? And why not do both? Because now looking back at it, I'm like, this guy could have kept the agency running, but then she even hired it, like a CEO, like dude, hire somebody else, cut you cut half of the profits, fuck it. Keep 20, 30 grand a month just coming in passively or almost, right? And then just build something else. Why did you just like cut everything off and why did you switch completely different market? Yeah, great question. I think there's a lot of things, but the main one being, like you said, I'm like an all-in type of guy, right? Mm -hmm. I can't do two things, like it just, it doesn't work. Like I need to do one thing and like just go all in, give it my all. Like, I will succeed in it, right? But trying to like manage two things at once is like really difficult for me and I don't yeah. like it, right? So for sure, like I could have kept the profits, like have the profits, have somebody run it. But I also wanted to go in the US market. I feel like it was more of a challenge as well because like this is where like all the big dogs are. Yeah. And um, the French Quebec market is a bit, and you know, n n not saying this in a negative way mm -hmm. at all, but it, it takes the French Quebec market like a few years to catch up on the US market. Always, always, right? always, always, yeah. So I was ahead of my industry, right? Like, for example, when talking about YouTube ads, like they didn't even like comprehend like the concept, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like let alone be open to it, right? So, but the US market was, so yeah, just made sense for me, like just challenge, um, I felt like I also capped the market in uh, in Quebec. Like everybody knew who I was. Like if you were a real estate agent, you knew like who I was. Yeah, yeah. Because like I was advertising so much. Yeah. On uh, on Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, LinkedIn ads, YouTube. I was doing outreach on Facebook, LinkedIn. So, and most people even that had an agency in Quebec, like in our space, they know who you are. Like I, I people know your name. Like I, I talk to people, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, like did this guy, you know, they've seen your ad. They're like, everybody's seen your fucking ads in Quebec. I'm sure yeah. like it's real estate agent or not. Everybody's seen your ads. So bro, one thing I'll tell you is like, you know, I went to um, that mastermind in, uh, in, in Medellin in uh, Colombia. Columbia, yeah. And um, a few of the guys there all making like multiple six figures, seven figures in their twenties, thirties. I kid you not. I go introduce myself and they're like, man, you're that guy from that <laughs> ad. I'm like, bro, you gotta be kidding me. They all have seen my ads. How much money do you think you've spent on ads? At, like total for yourself? Not that much when you think about it, like probably 150K. Okay. 
Yeah. I would have thought more, actually. No. Like, okay. No. 150 grand. I mean, still, look, it's it's a... Because like, when you target real estate agents, it pretty much targets anybody who has a business at this point. Like, it's, it's a very kind of... Or like, even myself, anybody who has a business and money probably started looking into content about real estate at some point because like it's, it's an investment right yeah so inevitably these people get targeted kind of by the ads like it's hard for an algorithm to kind of figure out who's who so I'm, I'm sure basically that like they they've kind of saw you through that you know they probably felt fell into the rabbit hole at some point and then next thing yeah. you know they click on an ad and then they get retargeted forever there so you go. <laughs> yeah exactly awesome so with that being said any final things you want to mention any any pieces of advice pieces of knowledge any final words from the great great Mikael <laughs> um, I mean let's be specific like what kind of advice you just in life in general like people trying to like succeed make it in life and make it in business if you were in an Uber right now and you were speaking to the Uber driver and he's like yo I man I want to I want to build a business man I, I want to make some money right now yeah what, like, what's one thing you would tell me to help me make money? Dedicate your whole life to it, man. You'll figure it out. That's what I, I, I'll tell him. If he's just starting out, man, if you just focus all your time, energy, and focus on one thing, you're gonna be, you're gonna be good at it, right? I think that's one thing is like, people start a business and then they don't, they underestimate the time, energy, and focus it takes mm -hmm. to, to build it in my opinion. So I guess to wrap things up, it sounds like, you know, I, I, for this last piece of advice, you've mentioned early on in the podcast that you had, for you, it was three and four, three to four years of like dedicated focus. Like you did nothing else than work for that amount of time. Yeah. For somebody else that I spoke to earlier, he did, he said it was like six months of like pure focus. Personally, for me, I would say it was probably the first year and a half of like, just like really figuring stuff out. So I'm there, a bit slow, you know, it takes me like yeah. uh, three or four years. No, but it's like, <laughs> at the same time, you're a pioneer, right? It, 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 yeah. Which is what I'm going to say. You were young, it's you were a pioneer. There's like life experience, yeah, yeah. which most guys are starting, they're like in their twenties. So they, they've got life experience and like references to, to put behind them. But, um, which I'm giving you excuses. <laughs> so what I want to uh -huh. say right now is that there is no matter what, how long it is, there is a period where you got to block stuff out. You got to do you and you got to, you got to sacrifice. Like you have to just be selfish for a few months or a few years. I agree. Yeah. Sacrificing like, especially at the beginning after that, you can have more of a balanced life. Yeah. But at first you won't have a balanced life. No, at all, at all. You just got to go all in sacrifice. Like, you know, the, the social media, hanging out with friends, partying, all that, all these activities that are not helping you reach your goal, cut them out. Cool, man. All right, where can people find you? They can find me on Instagram, uh, YouTube. We're gonna link them below, I guess. Yeah, we are. But uh, if you just wanna say it maybe out loud, what is the at on uh, Instagram? Michael Berube, uh Michael underscore Berube. I don't even know my Instagram handle. <laughs> I think it's like, uh, Something. yeah, M-I-K-A-E-L underscore b-e-r-u-b-e -E. look look at his face google him and you'll find him you'll find me so man thanks for uh thanks for coming on today and uh, have an awesome day thanks man thanks yeah. for having me